make sure we're all good to go. And everyone, it looks like we've got everyone on the line now, so we're going to get started. So thanks for your patience as we get up and running today. Um, and we're just going to start things off for today's Change Ambassador Network call. So, okay. So this is Colleen Kennedy, um, and I'm the Director of Innovation and Engagement with the Council. We're thrilled that you're able to join us for today's call. Um, we've got some amazing speakers sharing what they're doing, and so um, really delighted to to be able to share some of the work that's happening. Maybe before we get started, I wanted to take a moment um, to acknowledge the traditional territories that we're all on today. Um, so for the Council, we're located in Vancouver, and we'd like to acknowledge the unceded territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish nations. Um, and I know that all of us are located all over the province today, so if we could just take a moment to acknowledge the territories that each of us are guests on today. The other thing as we start, um, we'd like to invite you to take a couple minutes to introduce yourself in the chat box. So who is on the call today? Um, would love to know your name and where you're from and kind of get a sense of who's joined us. Um, you know, it's always nice to have a sense of who's on the call and, and where everyone's from. Now, just before you do that, I just wanted to highlight how to do this. So on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, if you haven't done this before, you want to make sure you're selecting Send to All Participants as the option. And then everyone will see a note um, of who you are and where you're from. So Michelle started us off, and Robin from the council to let us know who's here and who's on the call today. As we get started, um, we are recording. We do try and record these calls to make them as accessible as possible. Um, so we're really excited to have people join us today. And we also want to make sure these sessions are available to people after the fact as well. So we record them, and we do post them on our website. So I know Sue can share that link so we, we know where that is during today's call. You'll be able to access that as well. Um, you know, last but not least, I guess not last but not least, but if you're on Twitter, we really invite you to get tweeting today. Um, we're going to be sharing some news after our, our Ambassadors in Action presentations about some of the things that are happening both this week and moving forward. And we really invite you to jump right in there and get tweeting away. Let's make a little bit of change, joy, and noise around the system, uh, share what's happening, and talk about some of the work that's moving forward right now as well. So we're really excited about that. So the hashtags are up on the screen, and Sue's just popped them in the chat box as well, so you can reference those as well during today's call. So we invite you to get, uh, get on Twitter. Um, you could win. So if you want one of the coveted Change Day t-shirts, we're actually going to be doing a draw at the end of today's call and all of our CAN BC webinars as a chance to win one of the coveted shirts. Um, Shelly Lynn, I noticed you're on the call today. Shelly Lynn's done some amazing stuff to customize her Change Day shirt. If you haven't seen it, check out Twitter. And Shelly Lynn's account shows some amazing photographs of, of what she's done with her shirt to make it her very own and, and live Change Day out loud. Um, but these t-shirts, we will be doing a random draw at the end of today's call, so stay tuned for that. Now, as you know, these calls come out of the Change Ambassador Network, which emerged out of Change Day 2015. And this is really just that incredible grassroots, uh, group of grassroots champions um, for Change Day. And so I um, always wanted to kind of bring it back to that. So anyone who's, who's um, not already part of the network, we invite you to be part of the network. And part of being on that network, um, and Sue's kindly posted the link on how to join that in the chat box, is to actually receive our newsletters, which kind of shares information around work that's happening both on our campaign front with things like Change Day, What Matters to You Day, but also what else we're doing in the system. We really try and um, have a chance for us all to connect. Last year we had a Can BC Network breakfast at the forum, and it looks like we're going to be doing that again this year. And so uh, we always welcome you to join us in that group. Um, so speaking of which, I know there's a few people on the call today. would love to know how many of you are actually um, currently receiving the CanBC newsletter. I'm just going to hand the ball over to Sue, who's going to run a poll right now. So how many of you on the call today are receiving our CanBC newsletter? And maybe say yes if you do, no, but you'd like to sign up, and no, you're not really interested at this time. We'd love to hear from you. So you just take a couple minutes to answer the poll and then hit the submit button. Um, we'll be able to have the results up on the screen in just a couple minutes. So as I mentioned, the CanBC newsletter is a great resource for information around some of the things, uh, campaigns that we're running in the Council, some of the work that's moving forward, um, includes things like highlights from these presentations, um, other sort of sub-campaigns that are coming down the pipe, or just general information that you might be interested in. Um, so we might want to close off that, that 
Oh, we've already got it up here. So, um, so the people on the call today, um, there's 35. Sorry, I'm looking. 35 percent of you actually already do receive the newsletter. Um, it looks like 41 percent of you don't yet. Um, so, you know, we really do invite you to sign up. Sue's made it nice and easy. If you just follow that link in the box on the right hand side in the chat box, um, you can actually sign up for the newsletter and receive those. So, um, just wanted to share that with you today. So I'm going to get you to hand the ball back to me, Sue, if that's okay, and I can yep, move yep. along and sort of share these slides. All right. So um, now really, as you know, Change Day is back. Um, and so you know, with Change Day being back, we're really excited about the work that's happening. Um, so as you know, we're inviting everyone to make a pledge again for Change Day and start moving things forward. And as we move forward with Change Day, um, we do invite everyone to kind of jump in and share how they're doing. And we want to hear from you as things move forward. Um, but for today, we wanted to share some information your way as well. So um, where are we at with Change Day at a glance? And giving you a sense of where things are at with the campaign and how things are progressing. Um, what we know right now is that last time with Change Day and in Change Days in the past around the world, um, we're sort of an exponential growth of pledges that takes place. You get a bit of a J curve that's happening on your map. And so we try to approximate what we're anticipating will be the progression of pledges for change day when we hit our 5,000 pledge goal. And I just realized our, our, our um, scale on the left-hand side looks like it got cut off here, so my apologies for that. Um, but what we have and this is that we're looking at we're pretty much on target right now. Um, when this graph was run by Eric on September 22nd, we had about 501 pledges, which was on, tar uh, on track for where we thought we'd be at this point in the campaign. As things sort of ramp up, um, you know, some of the pledges that are coming in are just so powerful, and we wanted to highlight some of those with you all today. So really just you know, some of the pledges we've seen, um, people wanting to increase awareness of local community resources for their patients with chronic pain, um, uh, folks committing to making a difference by volunteering with a mental health serving organization this year, um, promoting cultural safety and health care for Indigenous members of our community, and um, be part of a, a healthcare community that is 100% welcoming to clients and families affected by the opioid crisis. So some really powerful pledges that are coming in the door, and we're really excited to see those pledges and see the, the interest and energy around these pledges as they move forward. So when we're looking at change day at a glance, what's happening right now? Um, so our goal is 5,000 pledges. We've got less than 52 days left. We need about 86 pledges a day. Um, we're seeing our thermometer starting to increase, and the rate and pacing of pledges is certainly increasing as well. Um, it's interesting to see. So this was as of just, uh, I guess, a little bit later in the day. Monday, we had 520 pledges already. Um, so that's more than what was on the earlier sheet because they were created a couple minutes apart from each other. The interesting thing is we've now shipped over 31,000 resources, which is huge. And so a big shout out to Sue on the call today. So she's the CPSQC host on the call. Um, all of her work getting those items shipped out to the systems, that's a huge number. And we're also finding right now that there's, there's 51 partners, so we've hit our equal number of partners for Change Day this time as we had last time around. And so we're really excited about that as well. Um, so with 51 partners around the province, we now have many partners as we did last time. And actually, as of yesterday, we came to number 52, so we broke our record for last time around. We're seeing some serious jockeying for position from teams in terms of the work that's happening around the province for top organizations. For a while there, Fraser Health briefly crept, back, uh, crept past Island Health for the total number of pledges, and then Island Health has moved ahead again. Um, so we're seeing some interesting numbers in terms of pledges moving forward right now. So um, this little at a glance we'll keep sharing both on Twitter and certainly across the system right now. So now we're at my personal favorite part of the calls because these calls are really not about the council. They're about the ambassadors in action across the system. And so, you know, we're really seeing some amazing work happening around Change Day. And uh, one of those organizations that's really a shining star is BC Emergency Health Services. And so it's really with pleasure that I get to introduce our next two speakers. And so we have Carrie Campbell, who's the leader, quality, patient safety, and accreditation with BC Emergency Health Services. And we also have Jessica Davin, who is the director of quality, patient safety, and accreditation with BC Emergency Health Services. So welcome, Carrie and Jessica. You know, we really appreciate you joining us today. And it's been just a pleasure watching your activity um, on Twitter and seeing things really happen around BC EHS. So I'm just going to toss you the ball and hand it over to you to advance the slide. Thanks, Colleen. We'll just need to put our video on. All this technology. 
Hi, everyone. <laughs> so thank you again for the opportunity to have us with uh, all of you here. I'm going to start off by uh, sharing with you who BC Emergency Health Services is, and then Carrie will give you some of the details that we have been implementing for change day here in the organization. So um, we're a very, very exciting organization to work in. We are uh, made out of 4,600 employees, and we have a mix of paramedics, call takers, and dispatchers, so those are the people who take the phone calls in the 911 centers. We have community paramedics as well as, you know, support and management staff. Our business is to provide emergency pre-hospital patient care as well as inter-facility patient transfers across the province. We have 183 ambulance stations, so we really have a provincial footprint, and we have three aircraft bases in, across the province as well. Uh, in average, we take about half million 911 calls a year, so uh, we're, we're very busy trying to serve British Columbians the best way possible. Yep. Uh, we, we decided to participate this year in Change Day and become a partner with, a, with this initiative because BCEHS is undergoing a lot of transformational changes. So um, we, we think that a good way to support our staff uh, in the organization is by um, jumping into change day, because at the end of the day, what we want to do is make sure that with the small, the small pledges, we, we actually have a big impact into the changes that we're trying to implement as we want to improve the way we respond and serve the different communities across the province. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to Carrie, who's going to be talking about uh, what have we been doing with Change Day, and uh, there's some exciting news coming up. Yeah. So um, as Jess has kind of alluded to, we are very, very busy here, but we have a provincial footprint, and so we're really excited because it allows us to engage uh, the whole province of EMS uh, workers. and so. We've taken a bunch of different approaches to spread Change Day across EHS, and it was, it's always, it, I had a little proud moment yesterday realizing that we had made it on the, uh, the top ten list. Yes. So um, these are kind of some of the things we've been doing. Uh, so the first one is uh, out of one of the last webinars that I attended, I think in August, someone really recommended to engage senior leadership, any kind of quality council, and so we, ju we did that. Uh, they were very excited about it, and I think as much as change works both ways, it's really cool and inspiring to see when your, uh, your senior leadership uh, gets on board. Um, so we engaged them. Then we sent a whole bunch of swag, uh, contributing to that 31,000 <laughs> um, amounts of material ordered. Uh, so we sent them to all our ambulance stations, our three dispatch centers, uh, program areas, we got colorful stuff everywhere. And it's kind of fun because our uh, stations, they don't have colored printers. And so it's a lot of black and white printing. And so now we've come in and we've given them all this colorful, uh, colorful swag and they love it. Um, so in that package, we had a EHS uh, tailored one pager just to share a little bit what, why we're doing it and uh, how they can help spread the change. Um, the next one is we have a weekly bulletin that goes out across the organization. And so every week we've been uh, drawing a, a prize winner uh, for a coffee card because our staff really love prizes and coffee. <laughs> um, and so we've been, you know, highlighting the winner's pledge and we've also been uh, highlighting senior leadership pledges just to uh, spark a little bit of uh, conversation around that. Um, and we have an EHS specific hashtag. Uh, before I knew you could search uh, on the change day pledges, I thought it would be a good idea to have a hashtag specific to us so that we could see uh, what our staff are saying. Um, and then we are all about challenging each other, as some people have seen on Twitter, and so we have a lot of uh, a lot of district managers challenging their uh, stations as well as other districts 
challenging other their other counterparts. So it's it's been fun to sit back and be retweeting all these uh, little competitions, uh, and it makes it more organic when it's coming from them. Um, we've been well as of very soon. Um, we'll be promoting <coughs> Goose Chase. So there's a a weekly bulletin article about to go out and some tweets uh, that the Change Day team has kind of helped with. So, um, yeah, we're looking. I think our team is only of eight people right now, but we're building fast and we've engaged a lot of our champions uh, to join because everyone loves a, a little bit of a virtual scavenger hunt. So I think you guys are going to talk a little bit about that a little bit later. Um, and we, actually Jess and I were just talking about this, about how we're going to bring change day materials to some uh, pre-existing, pre-planned events. Um, and so we have our leaders forum coming up very shortly, and so trying to find ways to engage a whole bunch of people in one room. Um, so more to come on that. Um, so we're expecting to have 140 pledges by mid-October <laughs> in one single day. So I wasn't going to say that. That, set our, that sets us up to be accountable. <laughs> exactly. That's where I said it. So cross your fingers so we can submit as many as Oh, well. goodness. Yeah, now we're, now we're accountable to <laughs> everyone who's in it's, um, I got it in writing now. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, don't record this. Um, and then we have, um, what else do we have? And we're talking about it to everyone. Um, I have a colleague that sits across from me who laughs and warns everyone who walks into my office that they're not going to walk out without a pledge card. Um, and so I haven't had a lot of visitors recently, but uh, we've just been talking about it wherever we can. And uh, yeah, it's been really, it's been really good so far. Yeah. So that's what we've been doing. Um, these are our pledges. Uh, so Jeff, do you want to, what viewers is this? Yeah, so mine is to talk to a, at least five staff in the organization so I can I can get a sense of what makes them proud to work in BCEHS. And I had a, an opportunity to start those conversations and what I can share with the group is that people feel that uh, what makes them proud is to help, uh, help others in one of the most vulnerable times in their life, so when they're faced with an emergency situation, so helping them during those times makes them proud. Uh, and uh, my pledge was to regularly job shadow both our unbelievable paramedics and our call takers and dispatchers to really understand, you know, what a day in the life of uh, this world is like for them, and especially with the opioid crisis uh, being so prevalent right now uh, in our backyards, and just what that means for their mental well-being. Uh, we can't have patients cared for without really strong um, and supported staff. So um, I did my first ride along as part of my pledge last week. Um, so yeah, it was. It's always great to get up there, and we have a really uh, easy ability to do that here. Um, and so yeah, just to wrap it up, these are just some of the many pledges that are coming through the door. So we have everything from personal uh, changes that people are pledging to um, things that make an impact to BC's health system and recognizing staff and getting CPR certified. So uh, yeah, it's going really well and uh, we're hoping to stay on that top 10 yes. list. Uh, we love competitions, Jess and I, so uh, more to come. Oh. Oh, do we have to hand this over? That that would be great. So if you want to hand it over right now to me, because I'm going to be moving Debbie's slides forward. I, I, I realized I started talking and I was on mute. So um, <laughs> Jessica and Carrie, you, you just put a bolus of energy around the campaign. It is wonderful to sort of see it happening. I'm so delighted that we did record this session so we can hold you accountable for that incredible number of pledges. Oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jess is in trouble. We're going to have to <laughs> talk <laughs> after. <laughs> I wanted to let you know, too, that we discovered on the back end of our system last night that while we're updating um, the total number of pledges that people make uh, are going to our top 10 list, when somebody joins a pledge, it wasn't going to the total the top 10 list. So stay tuned. Your numbers will likely be increasing. Um, we'll probably see increases across the board, so watch for that in the next few days. Awesome. So, um, 
Um, just amazing to see all the different ideas of what you've done in terms of the creativity around, you know, sending those promotional materials around the system, sort of some of those bulletin posts, those coffee draws. I love that you've got your own hashtag. Um, uh, really exciting to see that happen, and I really get excited about the goose chase. You guys are, every one of the calls is going to hear more about that later today, but some friendly competition uh, that we're going to be doing with our partners uh, in the province next door. So uh, we'd be delighted to see a bunch of uh, your BCEHS teams participate. I'm going to hold time for questions right now so we can hand it over to our next presenter. Um, um, just And we'll have questions right at the very end. Uh, but I, it's a pleasure now I get to um, introduce um, Debbie, sorry, I'm having troubles, Debbie Johannesson. Um, so we really appreciate, you know, Carrie and Jessica sharing their incredible wisdom and experience that's happened in BCEHS and sort of the excitement and enthusiasm of how they're adopting this. And, and Debbie is equally creative in terms of a completely different approach. So um, sitting as an organization right now that's going through massive changes, building moves, um, huge changes that are happening, and how do we navigate this when there's many other things going on and many other things competing for time and attention. And I think Debbie wins the prize for being the master of creatively um, kind of integrating it into other work that's happening. So um, Debbie is the BC Women's Director of Quality, Safety, and Accreditation with PHSA. And it's just truly my pleasure to hand it over to Debbie now to, to share her story and experience. And Debbie, I'll advance your slides for you so you can just let me know when you're ready to go. Great. Thanks so much, Colleen. And so I'm speaking on uh, mainly behalf of BC Women's, but also BC Children's because we're um, one big happy family now. And if you can move on to the next one, this is our new reality. So we've been for quite some time um, building a new facility, joining two other buildings. So we're moving into the new Tech Acute Care Center on October 29th, 2017. So you can imagine that we're kind of um, just a little busy um, getting through all these different things. So that's our, our new reality. And um, Children's is moving over a lot of programs, and some of women's programs are going over there. The new NICU and our ORs and high-risk obstetrics are going over there. So lots of practicing and lots of things are going on. So you can appreciate or get a flavor of what's kind of happening. And of course, always what we're trying to do is focus on our patient safety and our patient safety culture and really honing in on what's important to us. Even though all these changes are coming up, we want to focus in on what we're doing. So that's just uh, symbolizing what we've done. So we do our um, next slide calling. We then um, do that by celebrating, trying to recognize all the great work that we do. And just as a sidebar, um, we went around for our accreditation ramp up and looked at what are the great things that we're doing for our patients and families and could we get stories highlighting the great things that we do. That beautiful little baby is actually my granddaughter uh, and she had, was a beautiful delivery that happened just before our accreditation. So I actually wrote a story as a grandmother talking about what I thought was really excellent care for our, um, our patients and for my daughter in particular. Next slide. So. With us, as you can imagine, I, I put a little picture here with um, Dorothy um, because it's accreditation, site redevelopment, and CST, oh my. Um, so we're slammed with the amount of things that are happening. There are so many great initiatives that's coming from the um, BC Patient Quality Council, um, and it, it gets daunting trying to encourage everybody to make these little changes at times. So uh, uh, the, the method that I tend to do is I gently um, uh, bring this information into my everyday conversation. So uh, we model an awful lot of these sorts of things. We will bring it to our tables to say, hello, my name is, makes so much sense for people that are doing. But to get the leaders to do it and to get staff to do it sometimes can be challenging. What matters to you, again, another great campaign that went on, but again, we were right in the middle of building the hospital and our accreditation, which we actually did extremely well in, in February. And then change day came up. So I thought, my gosh, if there's so many separate things, but why couldn't we kind of do it all together? So next slide. So one of the things that we know is what we need to do is we need to have our executives out there. We need to have staff know who's out there, who has their back and our patients back. And really that's our mechanism to deliver all these bundles up. So our executives are being um, coached to say, hello, my name is and who they are and really touching base and be reflective and listening to our staff, our providers and our patients and our families. And really talk about the purpose of their visit and kind of seeking permission to speak with patients and, and families 
needs, and then really trying to listen. Their job is not to um, necessarily provide the answers, but to listen really well and reflect back what they're hearing. And if you see the little picture on the icon is Dorothy with their red slippers, and if I could click my heels, I would make everything happen so perfectly, but it doesn't always happen that way, unfortunately. <laughs> Next slide, please. So again, um, this is purp purposeful. Um, we, uh, I, I go around with our leaders once a week, uh, much as the children's people do, and I'm trying to track their responses and provide some feedback back to the units, and I'll show you an example of what that looks like. And then it's to be shared with uh, the staff on their huddle board to talk about it, say, oh, so-and-so came, and gee, what did you talk about? And as I said, it's not a mechanism to create work, which goes over very well for our executives. In fact, they want to do more, um, but I'm trying to, um, you know, be careful what you say, because uh, <laughs> uh, you need to deliver back, because the last thing you want to do is have staff say, well, you know, I said something to somebody, and they said they'd follow up, and they never did. So we want to be really thoughtful and purposeful when we do our walk-arounds with that. Next slide. So this is just an example of the tool that um, I've, I've uh, borrowed this from Children's. Uh, and again, I put the title up there, What Matters to You, just reminding them to say, ask what matters, listen to what matters, and do what matters. And then I'm trying to going to be theming it. Um, so these, these types of um, documents, a one pager will go on each unit that we attend. They'll know who was in the area, um, the numbers of people, the numbers of staff, no names, um, but just the numbers of people that we reached, what was meaningful, the high level themes that are going out, the action in the moment because some things are quite fixable in the moment and then those things that need to be taken away and then who's going to follow up with that and then um, looking at kind of evaluation. I'm looking at rolling up themes. I don't know what's going to come out of this yet because we've just started this last week. Um, is it going to be physical environment or more staffing or more patient um, questions or comments are going to be coming? Not quite sure. And the next slide. And this is a children's form. Again, this is where I stole it from. I'm, I'm a great believer in stealing what I need to do. Uh, and so I just took their form, and I'm happy to share these out um, with anybody who wants these tracker tools as well. And next slide. So the, the change date piece. So um, last time when we did 2015, we had a huge campaign and we got a lot of people tracking and talking about it. And there was a bit of a resistance this time going around. I think that's maybe putting it mildly again, talking about all the stuff that we've just gone through accreditation and the building and all of that. So we wanted to kind of build upon things that are already in place. So Glenda, the little, um, uh, the good witch of the north, um, she, she suggested that we partner up with human resources and their focus was on human uh, employee health and wellness during this stressful time. Uh, and so that really resonated with us because we know from Change Day in 2015, most of the change initiatives came from people who wanted to heal themselves or do things for themselves because we know if you have ha happy and healthy staff, you can do a much better job in caring for our patients. So that kind of resonated with that. So consequently, um, what we're going to do also during Patient Safety Week um, is also the week that we move in on the Sunday. Uh, and so the Patient Safety Week, we're going to be visiting all our different units and um, just checking in with people to see how they're doing. We're going to bring a treat and some beverages where we're allowed to do and really thanking the staff for all the hard work to, um, with all the things that they've been doing and how's it going and how they're looking after themselves with regards to doing that. And I stole these questions that I have here from Jessica Javin, who's from EHS, who you just um, heard speak just uh, the presentation before, because it's really looking at the heart of why we're here about talking about our patients. And it's so easy to get staff to open up when they talk about their passions to do that. Uh, the other puzzle piece, of course, is we have a lot of um, uh, lots of moves going on to the new building, but then there's those people who have been left behind who are still in the old rooms, the old floors that don't have the shiny paint and the new equipment. And how do they now manage um, now that the, 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 the rigmarole has all passed and the big flurry's gone over? How do they cope with all this change? And what does that mean for them going forward? And what are they going to do with that? So again, we will have our comment cards, but the focus for us, again, this is part of us going rogue and not really following the script, is these are conversations. Next slide, please. It is really about um, 
hearing from, from the staff. And so the question was, well, do we pledge or not just pledge? And, and when we talked about it and to staff and to management, it felt like it was just one more thing that they just didn't want to do that. So we will have the mechanism there to have some pledges, but I would really be happy to have those pledge cards up on their walls to talk about, because I really think it's those conversations that people need to ground themselves in the work that they do and who they are and how to take care of themselves and their patients. So change day, yeah, it's, it's coming um, November 17th, but really change day is every day. And we, I think we are, we do embrace it because that's our life now. Um, change is all around us. It's how we survive and how we help our patients survive and, and do well each and every day. So that's our story uh, at the campus at Children's and Women's. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. That's brilliant, Debbie. I'm going to ask people to hold for questions after our, our next presenter. But I really loved hearing your creative approaches to how to embed campaigns in your work. And we always talk about the role of distributed leaders um, and how you have to adapt your local context. And I love your adaptations. We think it's really brilliant how you've creatively done this. I couldn't agree more that those conversations are key. And, and if you're so inspired and you do get some amazing conversations, some amazing ideas for what people are passionate about, what they want to see change, we also welcome you to send them our way. We happily enter, if you think they're pledge worthy, we certainly, I think so all of those ideas are. Um, even we'll take pledges in any way you want to send them to us. Um, I think I said last time, we'll even take them on toilet paper, although that's not our preferred choice. Um, but we'll, you know, you can send us photographs, you name it, and we'll enter them online. And I think it's hearing people's passion remembering what connected them to health the, the change day is all about. So what do you want to do to make it better and what is that going to look like? So it's exciting. So thank you for sharing that and really highlighting sort of some of the possibilities that you can navigate your way through a campaign like this even with lots of other things going on, Debbie. So thank you. Um, I'm just going to sneak ahead now and then we will have questions after Shada's presentation. Um, for those of you who were able to join us at our soft launch back in August, um, we heard from uh, Michael Orendane, who was one of the staff members at Delta View Life Enrichment Center. And today we have the Director of Therapeutic Services of Delta View Life Enrichment Center with us today. And I couldn't be more excited to introduce uh, Shada. So Shada, as you'll hear when she gets talking, much like the passion you hear with Carrie and Jessica and Debbie, is another passionate advocate for Change Day. Um, Delta View was a very active partner for Change Day 2015 with 273 pledges, lots of action, lots of activity. And really, uh, Shada is bringing that passion now to Change Day 2017. So I'm going to just hand the ball over to you, Shada, and we, we're really excited to hear what you've got up your sleeve. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. All right. So thank you so much for inviting me to um, be a part of this. Um, as Colleen mentioned, we were part of Change Day 2015. Admittedly, as excited as I was to learn about Change Day when I participated in Quality Academy, um, we were a little bit slow to get involved in 2015. Um, I think our entire campaign ran probably about three and a half weeks. Um, to get the staff really energized here. Um, but once we got that energy going, and if you heard from Michael, <laughs> you already know that our staff did some amazing, um, amazing initiatives with um, regards to um, wearing incontinence products and, and such, and also making personal pledges. Um, so here is, um, I'd like you to meet Ashley. Ashley is one of our team members, and um, when we started talking about Change Day 2017, we were trying to, we were A, worried we wouldn't get uptake, um, but I was wrong. Um, we, we were actually inundated with staff coming forward wanting to be a part of our Change Day um, relaunch for 2017, Ashley being one of them. Um, we got together as a group and we talked about how could we um, make this exciting, not just for the staff, but for other long-term care sites around us. Um, I don't know that too many got involved, um, you know, in the South Delta area. I don't know all the stats, but um, judging by the directors of care that I presented to last week, I don't think too many. But Ashley is one of our great team members. Um, she was part of the group that wore the incontinence products, um, skin to skin, in 2015. And this year, um, 
She and her team have pledged to experience a shower or, ba or bath that um, residents receive every day without, without being able to verbalize her needs so that they can learn and share in the experience of um, what, what people in residential care go through um, in, in their day-to-day -day living. Um, we had, so we put together a short video and I'm hoping that later um, it can be a, a, a link that you guys can visit. But we invited um, not just our staff, we invited volunteers, we invited uh, family members, we invited just visitors of Delta View to um, come forward with a pledge that they would like to make for 2017 um, so that we could put together the short video so that we could send a challenge out to all the um, facilities, all the, all the long-term care sites in South Delta. Um, this is a group of um, residents and family members with Lori, our Director of Spiritual Care. I don't know if you can see very clearly what it says on her pledge, but her pledge is to listen for what people can't say. And a lot of the residents um, in the home that are re represented here are, um, you know, special care. And it's lovely that their voice can be heard through their family. This is Arthur. He is one of our original Change Day team members. And when we talked about Change Day 2015 and how to re-energize, it was really touching when he came to me and he said, well, I still live my pledge every day um, since 2015. And his pledge was to treat each day like it was the last day of his life. And that to us was so powerful that we made an impact and it stuck. Um, admittedly, I made a pledge to eat healthier and it didn't stick because I still go through the McDonald's drive through But um, this, this is Arthur. Um, two weeks ago, we had our very first family council meeting after a hiatus over the summer. And one of the family members whose loved one passed away in 2016, who is still helping us with our family council, um, emailed us in and said, you know, if you're looking for ideas for what we can do as a family council, I'd love to change day. I'd like to participate. So we know that we made a difference um, with all the small changes that we, um, we made. We opened up our pledge day to students who are doing preceptorships on our site, so with the hope that they will take it back to their schools. Um, and with the personal pledges, you know, we are hoping, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, something as, as, as big as trying on incontinence products, but encouraging staff to, you know, make a personal pledge, engage in something that is about self-care for themselves. And this is, these are our residents. It's incredible for their voice. Um, and they're so proud to um, have their pledge posted. They take their family members out to visit their, um, their photo. So this year, some of our ideas to get people going, um, we've got this public service <laughs> announcement that we're hoping to share with any site that um, wants to get energized. We are setting up um, a booth downstairs where we will post everyone's pledges and um, we will um, take photos on, of the visual pledge that anybody wants. Um, we've had a lot of people come in to say, well, we want our picture posted up there. Um, I, I couldn't get a good picture of our solarium area, but I'll try and send it in later when we get someone with better skills than I. Um, but we've got in a very large area of our um, main entrance um, the photos of these folks and many, many more with their related pledges. And um, we're going to set up a little photo booth so people can stand up, get their photo taken. We will post it. Um, we're also inviting all these folks you don't have to think of an original pledge. You can join a pledge that's already posted. And um, we are, we've got a bunch of different um, promos that our pledge team has. Um, we'll be trading a pledge for a granola bar and something healthy next week um, at our launch. And we've got ambassadors. We've got family ambassadors. We've got volunteer ambassadors. We've got ambassadors from every one of our teams to, um, to spread to spread Change Day. Our director of spiritual care is taking it to her church. Um, we've got family members taking it to their support groups. We've got um, students taking it back to their schools. 
because the, the message of Change Day is, is just so global. It's not just about the healthcare sector, it's about everyone. So um, I'm just excited that we can be a part of it and I'm hoping that we'll get our pledges up so we'll make it to the top 10 uh, one of these days really soon. That's it. <laughs> now Shada, it's Sue, we do have the video. Oh, okay. So I, I will play it now. Oh, sure, Perfect. sure. Just so you know. Oops. Can you get the audio on there? If you don't have your audio on your computer, you do need to have it on. Sorry, I didn't get that preamble in time, just to let you know the video is playing. Um, if you turn the audio on, you'll be able to hear it. If for some reason you don't have your setup accurately established for the video, we have included it in the chat box so you can watch it after today's call. There you go. Um, this, this little PSA was, was done in conjunction with one of our volunteers who works in our coffee shop, and she was so excited um, that she helped us with uh, putting this together. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Shada. It's just amazing to see that video and see things come together. Um, sorry, everyone, for interrupting the video there briefly at the beginning. Um, we will send it out for those of you who didn't have your volume set up to be able to listen to it. Um, uh, you can listen to it after the fact. And it's really exciting. So maybe just uh, pause for a second. We're, we're so excited to hear how things progress, both at Delta View, um, uh, sorry, BC Women's, as well as BC Emergency Health Services. And just wanted to pause for a couple minutes to see if there's any questions for Carrie, Jessica, Debbie, or Shada. You're welcome to raise your hand or pop a question in the chat box. I do have a question, maybe while people are thinking a little bit. Um, so my first question for, for, is for BC Emergency Health Services, so Carrie uh, and Jessica. Um, you know, this is a new organization. You haven't had previous momentum um, from Change Day in terms of uh, as active participation in 2015. Um, and so we certainly did have pledges from BC Emergency Health Services, but you've really ramped it up this time. What do you think has been your secret for the level of engagement you're seeing within BC Emergency Health Services? Is there one piece of advice you'd give to other teams right now? What would you say, Jess? I think for us it's not one size fits all. We have such a diverse organization that um, communication, you have to try all different types of things. Like I said, some people really like the challenge aspect and um, others like the, they read the articles. Um, but I think people just want to be a part of the change and uh, as our organization goes under this large transformational change, uh, it gives them an opportunity to be a part of that. No, I, I mean, to add to what Carrie is saying, I think it gives a positive spin to the changes that we're experiencing in the organization. So um, I, I think that more and more people will start engaging uh, with us, but this is, this is not only about change day, this is about making sure that we, we approach change with a positive, uh, with a positive perspective. Because change is the only constant that we have in the system. Not the only, but one of them. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Oh, brilliant, thank you for that. Um, my next question is, is for Shada, for Delta View. So you, you are a seasoned Change Day person, and you just see this level of groundswell of support for Change Day. I heard you were even turning people away in terms of having the capacity to catch all those pledges that were coming in the videos. Um, what do you think it, it would be your advice in terms of the success of the program from your perspective, um, bringing it back a second time to an organization? You know, um, I, would, I would 
certainly, such, I mean, having a change day team, we, so we, we just created one, um, is, is really key. I think having people, like the ambassadors that we've sort of found in the different areas of, um, of our site to be inclusive and to get them excited about change day was really, really helpful for us. Um, and, um, you know, with families connecting with families and, um, you know, dietary staff connecting with dietary staff, so that all the different areas felt like they have a voice and they've got a role um, to be able to have a defined role. Um, but, you know, like, as, as I mentioned earlier, but not in this presentation, when we were putting together the idea of the video, um, we had sort of put the word out and expecting maybe 10 or 15 people to come forward and expecting to film for an hour. And just sort of the excitement of being able to be a part of something bigger, the momentum was crazy. We ended up with something like 60 photos. And um, we just, we finally had to turn people away to say, we have too many right now. Our photographer has to leave. But, you know, the requests still keep coming. Um, and I think sort of doing the visual, where it's not just the card with the, with the pledge, but actually having the, the face to it. Um, and and we're, we're starting right now, one of the projects we've started is to share individual stories. So um, why change dairy is important to individuals who are participating. Um, so I think that that's kind of cool so that people know it's not just another initiative, because you can have initiative fatigue, but it's to have something, what's the personal? You know, what's my connection? Why am I doing it? So um, we are started just sort of collecting those stories, which I'm hoping to post under the photos of the staff that are willing to share it. So that's one of our strategies. That's brilliant. I really like it. And I think, Debbie, um, thank you so much for sharing that. Debbie, and I loved your stories today in terms of how you've embedded it into the system as well. So when you're looking at many other competing priorities right now, that you've been able to find a space for this and to have the conversation. Um, any last words of wisdom you'd like to share, Debbie, before we move on today? Uh, um, thanks for that. I, I really loved hearing everybody's um, comments about things that they're doing, and I think for us, um, we just really had to be mindful for what the culture was like and what, how everybody was feeling, and making a story about what's important, and all of these initiatives really do make sense, and if you put them in practical terms, and I think people will um, uh, come along with this, and I, I have no doubt as we kind of socialize the change day, going forward without pushing, I think it will get that momentum going again. Um, so yes, you can be rest assured we will be submitting some things, but again, that won't be our primary focus, and we'll just see. Hopefully, we'll ignite some uh, um, uh, energy back into a system that's pretty taxed right now. But again, it's just, I think, just knowing your audience and just being um, able to change it up with, as somebody said, just do the multiple strategies um, that you need to do to kind of reach the people who are actually doing the work. Thank you so much, Debbie. Uh, I really thank you again, just to take a couple minutes before we move on, to thank so much um, Carrie and Jessica, Debbie, as well as Shada for joining us today. We really, really appreciate having you join us and share your experience with Change Day and some of the strategies you've leveraged to help us all be successful. So I'm going to move quickly through what's next here and then hand it on to my colleagues to share the details. Is so we have a number of things coming down the pipe for Change Day. As we mentioned last time, this amazing Change Day calendar of events is available online. Um, Sue's going to post that in the chat box. You're all welcome to follow that link and access it. Um, but right now we've got a couple things coming up, and we wanted to tell you a little bit more around our plans for Join, Like, and Share Pledge Week, which kicked off yesterday. Um, the Change Quest, which is kicking off today, and then coming down the horizon is the Clear Residential Care Week. So uh, it's all yours, Catherine. I could just navigate your slides for you. Yeah, okay. Well, like Colleen said, it's uh, like Join and Share Week. We're really excited about this. So, like Join and Share Week provides a great opportunity to showcase your favorite pledges and join your fellow change makers in action. Go to the next slide there. This is my slide that I put together with lots of hearts because this is the week to spread the love. Of course, you can join, like, and share a pledge any time from now until change day, but this is the week. It's a great opportunity to help showcase the pledges of your fellow change makers committing to change. It's super simple. 
it's, uh, we'd like to invite you to amplify the energy. So first, go to the Pledge Gallery, and Sue put, uh, linked the post up earlier. Maybe I'll get her to do it. She did it already. Yeah, so you can click on that link, browse through all the pledges, and choose one that resonates most with you. And then like, join, or share that pledge. As an added bonus, we invite you to watch for our new blog posts and uh, pledge profile each day throughout the week, highlighting a pledge made for Change Day uh, 27. So this will be on 2017. So this will be on our blog, and uh, Sue will post that link as well. So this is a chance to profile these phenomenal stories, and we want to celebrate their commitment to change and inspire others to do the same. So it's like doing a share week this week. So head on over to the gallery. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for sharing that, Catherine. I know many people often struggle with, what do I pledge? I'm not sure what to pledge for Change Day. And so if you're one of those people who's really struggling with what to pledge, this is a great chance to kind of go see what others have pledged, and maybe that will inspire you to you know, actually join someone else's pledge or perhaps serve as food for the imagination. You can just like their pledge and go on and create your own and share it further. So it's a great week to kind of do this. And as Catherine mentioned, we can do it any time, but we're really trying to highlight this week. And there's some amazing amazing blog post, so don't miss out on reading those. Um, so thanks so much, Catherine. I'm going to skip over this polling question right now because we want to make sure we've got time to dig deep into ChangeQuest. I'm going to toss the ball over to my colleague Jeff now to share a little more information around ChangeQuest and what's coming down the pipe. Perfect. Thanks, Colleen. Um, so just uh, to let you guys know, I think we've talked about it a couple times uh, a bit today, um, ChangeQuest, it's here. And uh, it's a really cool way to uh, get some competition going around um, what's happening in, uh, for Change Day around the province and, and actually across Alberta as well. And, and uh, it starts today. It's going to start at 1.30 today, so that's uh, eight minutes from now. Um, but it's basically a virtual scavenger hunt where um, teams can compete and uh, send us some photos and proof that you've actually completed a mission and there are points assigned with that, and there's different points depending on the mission. Um, and it's essentially a, a friendly competition to, to see what's happening when, with other change makers around the province. And, and uh, we've done it before, and it's been really successful, so we wanted to try that again this time. So it's decently easy. <clears throat> uh, do you want to play? Um, what you do is form a team to complete the Change Quest missions. So put some people together. Um, you can do it on your own, but uh, it's more fun if you have some more folks uh, to join you as well. Um, choose a team name and assign a team leader. Um, that team leader is essentially going to be the one that's going to uh, send in all of the uh, missions you guys complete. And of course, that team leader is going to assign, um, or sorry, download something called Goose Chase app on their uh, on their device, whether it's uh, an Apple device or an Android device. They're both uh, available in those stores. Um, and sorry about the BlackBerry users; it's not uh, it's not available on BlackBerry. But uh, find the team leader who's got an Apple or Android device and. Uh, they can be your team leader. So essentially what you want to do is download the app. So go into your app store, just simply choose Goose Chase in the app store. It is free. Um, the icon, icon on the right-hand side is a couple of, uh, I guess those are geese feet or goose feet. Um, that's the app you're looking for and the icon you're looking for. And essentially you need to um, uh, create a, uh, once you download the, the app, you need to create a quick account, which is, takes you literally six seconds. Um, you just have to put your name and your email address, and that's what all you have to do there. And uh, from there, it's uh, decently easy, actually. We just, uh, uh, once you search in the top right-hand side, you'll see a little search button. Um, you type in Change Quest. There is a space between the two, but you type in Change Space Quest, and up will come this game. And uh, the idea is uh, you'll be able to see all the missions from there. So long story short, once uh, we get started at 1.30 today in literally six minutes from now, um, it goes until October 13th at noon. It does go 24 hours a day, so depending on um, when you're doing this, it does work on weekends, of course, but essentially that gives you about 17 days to get this going. And uh, the idea is to get that competition going. We've actually, I just checked a few minutes ago, we've already got 15, we were trying to keep this decently secretive, but we've already got 15 teams uh, signed up for this. Some of those folks are from BC already and some of them are from Alberta because they launched this part yesterday. Um, but please do um, send us that info. And, and also what we want to do is, um, because it's a, a, a challenge based on your, um, your pictures you're going to do, we do want to make sure, and we try to put some reminders in there as well, but we do want to make sure that when you are taking a picture of some people or, or some teammates that we do have their consent to have that um, 
uh, have that in there. And uh, essentially, you can see the points on the right-hand side, um, whether we're at, uh, talk about a change day retweet or change day chummies, um, those are 400 points. There are some worth a whole lot more points, and you'll find out that at, uh, at 1.30. Some neat things about Goose Chase is it does have an activity feed that shows you essentially who's doing what and, and uh, who's winning the race and which missions they've actually done, so you can see where your team is stacked up. Um, you can see other people's submissions. Be creative. We may be offering a few bonus points or something interesting if you uh, care to do something creative. So don't just try to um, get the mission done as quick as possible. We are looking at trying to post this stuff to social media. So get your creative A game going. We want to make sure that we uh, uh, try to make this as interesting as possible. Um, the first mission you will have, and you'll see this once you finally open it up, is um, my dream team. So this is essentially 2,000 points. And so it's worth, uh, I think it's the most on the entire thing. I'm just going to post the link into this one because what this does is allow us to see which teams are interested in, um, uh, in taking part. And it allows us to track where you're from, which province you're from, because it is Alberta as well joining us. Um, but the idea is if we have that first mission done, um, then we can see who's doing what. And we can make sure we send you guys some interesting um, summaries and emails and little friendly competition spread that uh, we can send to you guys as well. And that will be happening throughout the, throughout the team, or sorry, throughout the, the Goose Chase Challenge. So your first mission, um, form a team, pick a team lead, get that team lead to download the app, create that account on Goose Chase. Um, your team lead or somebody from the team is to sign up, um, that, uh, sign up your team with the link on the right-hand side there. Get on with a change quest and be really creative, and the winning team does get some prizes. Um, we do have some uh, um, BC Patient Safety Quality Council backpacks. We've got some water bottles. We've got some T-shirts. We've got a few other little goodies that we'll throw in there um, to a max of about five team members just because we are a little bit limited in what we can hand out. But uh, the idea is the winner at the end of October 13th, when it closes at noon, um, we'll announce a winner soon thereafter. So get out there. You've got uh, three minutes until it starts. And uh, register your team. And remember the the big thing is uh, the 2,000 point challenge is register your team with us. We know who you are and where you're from, and we'll go from there. Great. Thank you so much, Jeff. Maybe we'll hand the ball back to Sue, and Sue brings up the um, the poll that we're going to do really quickly right now. Just wanted to say a couple things. Um, our prizes are, are localized to BC, so we'll be awarding Goose Chase prizes in BC. Alberta will be awarding their own prizes in Alberta, but of course, the Alberta BC competition. So we're going to be having teams from both provinces participating in the Goose Chase. As you know, our change days are the same day. And as part of that friendly competition, we really do want to invite you to move forward um, with getting um, your team registered and see what we can do to have a great representation of BC teams on the call and, and see how we can do in terms of having the overall winner and the overall ability to have bragging rights coming to BC. Um, Sue, we have another poll that we're going to show up right now. Sue's just going to pull it up as we're talking. Is that are you planning on participating in Change Quest? Um, absolutely, no, but you're thinking about it. Tell me more. We can always get you some more information. So, um, of course, uh, while you're completing the poll, I invite you to take a couple minutes to complete this and let us know your thoughts of if you're going to join us for the Goose Chase. As mentioned, it not only gives you a chance to kind of have some fun, compete with our colleagues in the province next door but also have the opportunity to come up with a bunch of ideas for things that you can do to help promote Change Day. So it's filled with ideas for you to be able to take forward. Um, third, as we're doing this, just a reminder, if you do have any questions, so if you're one of those people who's answering C to the poll question, um, we want to just really invite you to reach out to us at changeday at bcpsqc.ca anytime if you have questions, and we'll do everything we can to kind of share it. Looks like there's a one team that's thinking about it. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. We've got five teams signing up, and a few people haven't answered so far. So thank you very much, everyone. We're looking forward to seeing that progress. Um, we have some more things coming down the pipe, and I'm going to hand it over to Jeff again to talk ever so briefly. Um, and Jeff, I can just advance the slides for you about sure. um, what's coming up the third week in October. So what we're looking at uh, for October 23rd to 27th is is highlighting CLEAR and Dementia Week. So CLEAR is a, um, a, an initiative we have going on with the Council, and we'll be launching later on this fall um, to reduce antipsychotics in residential care, and, and uh, also wanted to open that up to 
um, anybody who's involved in um, dementia care or have family members involved uh, that have dementia or friends who have, who have dementia, and essentially opening it up to see what kind of change might be possible that uh, we can highlight during the Clear and Dementia Week. So we'll be looking to see um, who is making some pledges and, and highlighting a few pledges that we see come in um, during that week just to show, showcase what is happening in, in uh, the reduction of antipsychotics, in, uh, in dementia care and patients and families with, uh, uh, with the, living with dementia and uh, going off from there, but just highlighting a lot of the interesting things that could be done in terms of making change for uh, folks that are involved in uh, residential care and uh, dementia week. Great. Thank you so much, Jeff. And I think that Shada's presentation is such a great springboard to that. Certainly yep. a challenge and a call out to all of the residential care homes around the province um, in terms of what, the, what your care home is doing at Delta View Enrichment, Life Enrichment Center and what's possible. Um, so I'm going to move us along. I know our time is up, but just to remind you that our next webinar is on October 17th. We're really excited that this is actually a joint webinar. So we want to get some buzz out in the system uh, about joining this one. We're going to hear from our change ambassadors in Ontario, BC, and Alberta. And so we're really excited about this joint webinar that's coming up next month. Um, reminder that Change Day is all about action. So not only making your pledge, but putting that pledge into action. Two of the things you can take action on this week are to join, like, and share a pledge, or Change Quest, or, or some of the things we've got happening immediately. Um, at the end of today's call, an evaluation is going to pop up. And we really um, want to just wrap up with this to say that your opinion really matters to us, and we want to hear from you. So if you could take a couple minutes to complete today's webinar evaluation, um, you'll be automatically directed to it. And we, we really do want to hear your thoughts and feedback, and we take it very seriously and, and take it and apply it to the future. So thanks very much, everyone. We hope to see you on October 17th. Please spread the word. As mentioned, we'll be doing the draw after day and we'll be touching base with those who are winning our prizes. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, everybody. And Carrie um, and our speakers that are on the phone today, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. I'm not sure if you're still all here. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>